Hi everyone, I hope you have all been enjoying your lunch in Arrakis University. My name is Eric Vasquez Reyes and I'm excited to share with you the incredible experiences and opportunities this program has to offer. So just a little bit about me, I'm going into my fourth year at Harper University studying computer science. Currently, I'm taking a coding course through a program called Code Path, which helps students from FGLI backgrounds get more involved in the tech world. I'm also part of a program for CS and engineering students at Apple, and I just recently joined my first startup at Harvard. In the future, I really want to work at a big tech company like Apple or Google and become a software engineer or freelancer. Now, let's hear from some of our program alumni about their own journeys and achievements in STEM. Hi everyone, my name is Emily Seppin. I attended Montclair State University and I majored in Earth and Environmental Science. Hi everyone, my name is Camila Marrero. I am actually now a graduate of Rutgers University. I graduated with my bachelor's in neuroscience and behavior and a minor in biology. My name is Chibuba Ara and I am a rising third year PhD student at Lehigh University. And I'm currently studying bioengineering in particular tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. Hi everyone, my name is Troy Slade and I'm a rising junior at Yale University studying mechanical engineering. I was a part of the STEM Ambassadors program from 2018 to 2022. I am, I'm Jaden Hamlet. I am a rising senior at Stockton University studying environmental science with a concentration in environmental quality. During my undergraduate degree, I was very active with research and other STEM activities on campus. I was very active in the research community on campus, so I've looked at research um, regarding the end Permian mass extinction. I've looked at time periods about 56 million years ago. I had the opportunity to create my own project in which I used pollen as a uh, climate proxy to see how different vegetation responded to uh, changing temperatures and which may have resulted from increased carbon emissions in the atmosphere. Um, right now I'm actually taking a gap year. I hope to apply to physician assistant school. I know technically medicine is not under the STEM scope, you know, science, technology, engineering, math, um, but it is very closely related. What I do on a day-to-day -day basis is to repair cartilage tissue within our knee joints so that patients won't have to suffer from osteoarthritis. I'm doing an internship at Princeton University, working at facilities, and I'm working closely with the civil and environmental engineers. It's something that I did, and it was like very much exciting, was did an internship in Kentucky at EKU. I was researching um, E. coli in different watersheds within like the Appalachian Mountains in Kentucky, and what I was doing was I was testing antibiotic resistance of E. coli within Kentucky between areas that consisted of agricultural, urban, and forested areas. I'm currently a part of the Yale Undergraduate Aerospace Association, um, specifically on the CubeSat team, and we're designing a small satellite that's going to be launched with NASA hopefully next year that studies cosmic rays in deep space. Um, and I'm a part of the mechanical and CAD team, and I'm electrical team lead. For me, being a 4-H STEM ambassador was an invaluable experience. I had the opportunity to work with brilliant scientists and engineers, attend inspiring sessions, and teach younger students about STEM. The program prepared me by giving me a comfortable and challenging space to explore various STEM pathways, which really helped me decide on what I liked and didn't like in terms of career pathways. Now, here are some more insights from our alumni about how the program benefited them. I definitely do think I benefited a lot from the STEM ambassador program. When I was younger, I was really stuck on being a marine biologist. And during that time, we did a lot of panels with other professors of the university, and I actually got really, really interested in the neuroscience professor and the um, presentation that they did for us. So that kind of broadened my horizons a bit and ultimately I did decide to go um, into the neuroscience field. And it sounds very cliche, but I really think it gave me the keys to be successful while I was in college as an undergrad doing research and labs and, and completing coursework. Think back onto all the opportunities that we had as a 4-H STEM ambassador, and I'm very thankful that I took advantage of almost every single one of them that was offered to me. I think the first one that was just extremely beneficial 
was the panel that we got to talk to the first week. Just having the opportunity to have like a little round table mini discussion with people who are professionals in, in the field was just so mind blowing to me. I had my own preconceived notions of what a scientist is and how they conduct research. One of the things that the 4-H program challenged me is that realization is that the experience is way more attainable for the younger generation. And I realized that there is a lot of young students conducting their own research by themselves and seeing if their work can help pioneer the new um, wave of engineering technologies. The program, it, it definitely helped inspire me to just really go as far as I can into the science realm. The thing I benefited from the most was having the ability to interact with other professionals within different industries in STEM um, and also being able to think creatively and innovate with my peers. One of my favorite memories from the program is visiting Rutgers University and getting that first exposure to being on a college campus. I got to meet many smart and amazing people from fellow ambassadors to scientists and engineers. And of course, the food was great. Now let's go hear some favorite memories from our alumni. My favorite memory of being a Rutgers 4-H STEM ambassador, I would probably say was um, going to different events and meeting all kinds of new people across uh, the state of New Jersey. So some of my favorite memories of being a 4-H STEM ambassador is working with children as they are beginning to work with different tools and techniques related to STEM. I think the first one that comes to mind though is the scavenger hunt that we did that first day coming to camp. I just remember being very shy and introverted and I didn't know a lot of people and so being put into a little a little group of people to navigate clues. It just helped me get to know everyone a little bit better and exploring the Rutgers New Brunswick campus that way was just so much fun. Being able to stay on a college campus for almost a week, that was a very new experience. I went into 4-H directly out of eighth grade. So I may have been slightly thinking about college, but I had no experience like on a campus like by myself. Definitely the teaching that we got to do afterwards. We did a program on like fish migration patterns of New Jersey, and that was actually very, very interesting, even though it, it might not sound the most interesting, but it was pretty cool. For those of you who are just starting your journey as 4 H STEM ambassadors, my advice is to keep feeding your curiosity with the new experiences that this program will provide you with. If a pathway or activity doesn't seem exciting to you at first, I would advise you to still try it out and find out if it's really the case. When I was first exposed to coding 4 H, I didn't understand any of it and I told myself I would never do anything with code again. Well, look at me now. I always say that growth cannot happen if you're always doing the same things you're already comfortable doing. So I say to you, get out there and find out what the world has to offer. But don't just take my word for it. Here's some more advice from our alumni. My advice for students that are getting started is to just keep an open mind. There are some days that it'll be challenging. There are definitely a lot of things to learn and be able to quote unquote master before you get out there and start teaching. My advice is to give everything a chance. There are going to be moments where you look at your little itinerary for the day and you see the activity that you're going to do and you just feel in your gut you're not going to like it. And I had those moments too, but I gave it a shot and you have to be very optimistic. The leaders know what they're doing, especially, uh, you know, Chad and Marissa and everybody give them a chance because they will help you figure out your STEM journey. Some advice is be open to all things and try not to be as closed off because you don't know where any of those opportunities can bring you, whether it be inspiration or, you know, things might, you know, you might, you might go somewhere or meet somebody and they expose you to a new light that can help you, you know, forge a new path. and. You know, all those kind like being open really does help. I would say to network, take up every opportunity that you can. Keep track of all of the hours that you're putting into the program because you will need it eventually when you're doing applications or you just want to 
have that as in your record. Put your best self forward when you meet people and interact with people and value teamwork and working with others to get certain goals accomplished. Um, I know a lot of the times working individually may seem as though it's more productive or it's easier to do. Um, but if you go into a team group or whichever effort that you're going into where you have to interact with other people, um, collective thinking can really bring out innovation and creative ideas. So value teamwork, network, have fun, and yeah, just enjoy yourself. In closing, I want to encourage all of you to make the most of your time in the 4-H STEM Ambassador program. It offers countless opportunities for growth and learning. Thank you for watching, and I wish you all the best of luck in your STEM endeavors. Bye.